guys, it's Drew with Future Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to stop numismatic crimes that have been happening lately. Let's get this video started. One quick announcement before we get into this story here. We wanted to talk to you guys about the Broken Arrow Coin Show that's happening September 9th, 10th, and 11th. Uh, it's a show that we're passionate about. It's people that really know uh, the space, um, but they also know about how to protect people in case anything were to happen to them. They have great show security, a great board floor. I mean, I really do enjoy the venue, and the drive's pretty nice too. Make sure to uh, check out the link down below if you guys want to visit the Broken Arrow Show. We'll have a table there. We'll be hanging out. Maybe we can go out to dinner. That'd be pretty cool too. Todd and Chris, though, are on top of their stuff. They really like to have people come in sell stuff to them but also buy some stuff too they always have a great selection really great guys i hope you guys check out that link down below because we would love to have you there so there's been a big story circulating lately about the a, &A show and a dealer that got robbed there and we're going to be talking a little bit about the details that we've heard what's been stolen and everything uh, of that sort but make sure guys to check out the information that we posted below this is the 67 tips to make sure that you are secure at a coin show and we were talking about um, basically what has been happening lately at the Grapevine Show, which was last episode, but this episode we're going to be talking about, like I said, the ANA Show. But a little bit of backstory about this. There was a dealer that was setting up his case. Uh, he had 24 Rolexes. He had a bunch of kind of high-end coins there too. And he got taken advantage of. And we're going to talk a little bit about that right now. So I believe there was a thief in the show that was watching dealers, seeing what they were doing, and seeing what they could get away with. And the thing about this dealer is that, um, from what we heard, the dealer set up his case, he put everything, all of his inventory in his case, and then he went to the bathroom, or he got a chili, chili uh, cheese fry or something, I don't know what he did. But when he came back, his case and his inventory were gone. And so there's a few things that can be gathered from this, and a few things that we can talk about with the thief as well. Um, but here are a few kind of tips and a uh, few points from the 67 rules here. The first one is keep the most valuable bag in your possession. When we're talking about the value of this, uh, this thief and what he got from this dealer, I would say that, I mean, it's at least $300,000 and stuff. I mean, Rolexes right now, I, see, I think the cheapest ones that are at least of quality are going for around nine, ten thousand. 10000 So if he's able to steal 24 Rolexes and some coins, then... The dealer was asleep at the wheel, in my opinion. And uh, we've been talking a little bit back and forth, me and Casey, and been asking the question, is it really an uptick in crime, or is it really an uptick in dealers that aren't paying attention, that have become lax in what they want to do uh, when it comes to show uh, safety? And the past two stories that we've talked about, this could have been easily prevented with a little bit of rules and practices in place. Uh, the next tip that I want to talk about is don't display more inventory than you can control. So this is self-explanatory in this case because he basically put out all of his inventory and then he left it out of his control for someone else to take advantage of him. And so it's a big importance which makes us move into the rule number 57. It's alert dealers next to you that you'll be back shortly. And what I can gather from this is that if the thief which was either using, using his case as an opportunity or he was planning to steal it, um, did a few things, okay? And my opinion is the thief just saw the opportunity rather than planning for it. So the, whoever stole his case, and I hope they figure it out, they walked in this show, they paid their few bucks, whatever, whatever, right? And all they were doing was they were saying, what dealer is by himself? Which one is it going to be hard for uh, hard for him to notice that it's gone? Where is his table placed, right? And so what I would gather from this situation is that if the entrance of the show is right here, which it's kind of like a, a room that I'm trying to display, I would say that maybe it was in the middle rows or maybe it was in the back somewhere. My, what I would presume as a thief is that they were looking at the people next to him and saying there's no one there for him to alert when he goes to the bathroom or when he goes to get something to eat. And so it was very easy for that thief to go, okay, no one's around him. He left his stuff there. He went to go buy inventory. Let me just pick up this case, 
and walk right out of the show. And that's exactly what he did from what I have heard. Um, if you guys want to see every single thing that was stolen, make sure to click the link below. It'll give you guys a brief inventory of all the stuff that was taken, and I hope that is retrieved for him. And another thing is, don't, oh, should do rule 67, the last rule, do not be complacent or a victim. And what that really has to do with this is that basically be on high alert at every single show that you were at. We talked about this last time. Just because you've been to 50 shows or 150 shows or 1,000 shows in your lifetime and you take this show for granted in terms of safety, you have a chance of being taken advantage of. And so, like, I, like we talk about all the time, we treat every show differently. And the, the few shows that we actually did set up at, when Casey and I go to leave a table, Casey either has to be at the table or I have to be at the table. If Casey's going to lunch, I have to be at the table. It doesn't matter what deal's going on or what's happening at the show. Drew's going to be at the table watching his stuff. If Drew's going to go walk the floor, Casey has to be at the table. It's, it's something that is just so common to me. It, it shows that we, are, we aren't complacent. We're on top of our stuff. We're not going to become a victim. We are displaying inventory that we can control. Uh, dealers that are next to you know that you're there because you are set up. You're there, but you also have your neighbors that you're talking to and working with. That's important as well. And you keep most of your value possessions with you. Casey's going to be there or I'm going to be there. We practice all these rules because we don't want to be hurt. We don't want someone to get the better of us and happen what happened like what happened with him. I think that uh, you know this is a great segue um, to talk a little bit about what happened after. So I think what they said was that they saw somebody on a camera exiting the show with a case. Nobody was able to pick him up because of why? Masks. Masks were the problem. So uh, a lot of different states view safety a different way um, in terms of the COVID-19 virus. And so some states might require a mask in shows, some might not. So um, what I would suggest and maybe what you guys should comment on is should they outlaw masks at coin shows? Should there be maybe a law set forth where people can't wear masks at coin shows or maybe it's just a rule if, it, if they can get away with it to not allow anyone to wear masks. I know that there's a lot of health implications and stuff with that, but I think that there's uh, at least a debate to have someone's identity presented when they go into a coin show and uh, we don't know who they are, right? So that's something for you guys to think about. This, is, uh, this has been Stop Numismatic Crimes Part 2. We hope you guys learned something from this. Comment your thoughts down below of what happened here, what would you have done differently. Um, maybe take a look at some of the tips that they posted on the website down below and add one that you might like that would fit this scenario. If you guys want us to comment or talk about a different story, make sure to let us know down below as well. Uh, subscribe for more videos like this. Make sure to hit, a like, the, hit the like button. Before you guys go, we wanted to talk about one rule that might be great to add to this uh, you know, 67 rules, possibly the 68th rule. And what we wanted to add was, once the cases enter the show, there's no taking them out of the show until the very end or when, when they can be walked out. So um, say like uh, you know, the show starts on Thursday at 8 a.m., right? Everyone takes them all in, dealers set up until about noon. And then say about Saturday at, a, at noon, they allow dealers to start taking cases out of the show. I think that'd be a lot better because it's kind of strange when you, if you saw yourself or you saw what had happened here, happen on a Thursday, right? The guy took this case into the show, he brought all his inventory into the show, and then what happened? He went to the bathroom, someone picked up his case and walked it out of the show. It's kind of strange, right? So I think that would be a great rule. Uh, we wanted to include a little snippet of one of our episodes from the Free Coin Show podcast, so make sure to check it out, the full episode down below if you guys want to watch that. But we will see you guys in the next video. But you think like sometimes, you know, you see these these shows, it's like we have these really smart thieves and they're going to go and uh, swindle their way through a bank and get all this money and they're walk out scotch-free. It's like, that's not like how most people think about like robbing people or taking advantage of somebody. They're like, right. man, that house looks like it got some watches in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they just literally go rob a house and they take it to the closest place they can.
to, to sell them. A few what were these guys thinking that night? You know, they go what party? They go to the club. Blow they're all, the all their they friends are like, "Yeah, we're about to be, we're, we're about to load it rich." rich. Yeah. Talk to my, like, talk to my three baby mamas, and yeah. they're getting their they're, way out. They're spending all their money that they they're have at the time. Rain. You know, yeah, they're, they're like, going yeah, all the we need this money. We can get some tomorrow. Maxing them credit cards out. Well, they just end up in jail. Yeah, they took them all to jail.